<laughs> so Wobbly is, um, um, is known as a store, erotic store connected to uh, cross-gender erotism. It was born uh, almost five years ago and is being evolving uh, uh, year by year. And uh, at the moment, the focus is very much connected to pleasure. So what you feel from the inside. And we are also very much connected to our community that is growing uh, fast. And uh, where we, where we uh, connect with, uh, uh, with a very intimate approach and uh, try to... Uh, I use the term educate even if even though I don't really like it, but we try to share as much information as we can uh, with our community so we can give um, everybody the tools uh, to just have a uh, easy access to their own pleasure. And we do that through um, surveys, uh, through uh, sharing just like technical information on products. Uh, uh, we share like uh, um, all that kind of information connected to to the body. So yeah, this is like a very uh, a work that especially in this time of quarantine uh, grew very much because we had the time to uh, just listen our community uh, deeper. So we felt like. Just to just to connect for, to, on the topic, we felt like that the, the the quarantine time gave us enough time to just uh, talk with uh, with all of with all these people uh, proper. Ele, do you want to add anything to the mic? Um. <gasps> okay, I'm uh, I'm unmuted now. Um, well, uh, from I don't know if you can hear all the noises of the street while I speak because there are ambulances passing by and police. But um, let me know if it doesn't make you hear. Um, no, I just want to say that um, we are a very special group of people in the sense that um, we work, uh, we have been working remotely and uh, we, what makes special our work is that we really love what we do and we are lucky enough to, to be able this job, uh, putting our face on, on the job and and other people working in this industry, in sex toys industry, uh, always, you know, hide from uh, behind the website or um, don't don't enhance the educational power of our of our job. And I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of being part of this of this family. And even now that we were apart, we haven't been closer than ever we have been closer than ever and um, um, you know for us um, Wavo, uh, now we just got a, a studio we just got an office in uh, October like uh, there, there's a store and we got a separate new place where we could shoot where we could um, have meetings uh, invite people over uh, host other communities there are many communities in Italy uh, that um, speak about sexuality in such a cool way. I think one of them is about to join us called Mulieris. Uh, then there is also Virgin and Martyr. And you know, we just got this place when we created connection and it reminded me a bit what was April at the super uh, underground part at, uh, uh, in, um, uh, in, in New York. And you know, there were people passing by and, and now we had to become this remote thing but and and actually we closed uh we felt like we we were closed in a way because we didn't do much instagram live or we didn't do all of these um you know online seminaries we did just a little bit 
uh, when we felt it was necessary and we worked more trying to share the, the knowledge on our channels. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been another revolution. Every year the, the team has grown and has changed and we, we have grown so, so much. But the growth we did with this pandemic has been exponential, <laughs> I must say. Uh, and um, I'm very proud of all, all the team, all the people working uh, with us. In what way has the, has the business evolved? Like, what's the, what was the growth? Like, basically, I want to know, during the pandemic, what were people looking for? Were people buying more stuff? Were people asking more stuff? What, what changed in that sense compared to I, I, I reply before starting from the internal point of view. So the growth is not just about sales. Yeah. It's, about, it's about process and it's about uh, optimization in our case. So uh, like not waste time and work and so schedule and, uh, and uh, you know, set the work in a proper way that was my dream like my dream in a in a very um in a time where everything you know is a kind of a wasteable i don't want to waste time as well which is very precious and i found myself and eleonora's too last year to just work an infinity amount of time <laughs> which is not cool because we are Milanese, I mean, she's from Venice, but she's almost Milanese right now. <laughs> so we have this, and I think like New Yorkers could be the same, like workaholic people, which is uh, not sustainable at the end. So sustainability to me is not just about, you know, what you uh, waste physically, but also in terms of time, what do you waste? So. I found myself not wasting, but just not organizing the time enough and don't put boundaries between myself, my work. It was, you know, when you do something that you like so much, you feel like you don't work, you never work. But it's, it's a tricky thing, right? Because you feel like you never work, but at the end, you are always on. And so this kind of uh, sustainability of time it meant a rework of a, a daily schedule, which was essential to do a great job, to not stress people, and uh, the outcome uh, was great. Even though it's still, it's still we're still testing it because the store is not closed, is not open yet. We're going to open on Monday, and the studio as well. Just we are just slightly and slowly uh, back. Uh, on track. Um, Can I add one more thing about it? Of course. Uh, the thing is that especially during this time we got the chance to study like uh, and all of us uh, as every Tuesday we have been doing at least one hour of collect or collective studying and this has been a beautiful bonding experience for the team and Frida is uh, attending a sexology school and um, she is every week, she makes summaries. Uh, in Italy we say Bigino, which are small books that they sell with a summary of the exams you have to do. Uh, and basically that's what she did for, for us. She made the old, she, she, she gave us all the notes she, she studied and she prepared special lessons for us about topics uh, that were uh, very, very interesting uh, and that allow us to be relevant, you know, as uh, workers, no matter our, you know, staying in Wavo or what, but uh, if you grow uh, as a person also in a business, you want to stay there because if you feel like someone is investing in your growth, is, is the best, it's the best. And that's what also makes Wovo special, you know, that we are very aware of what we say. We, we keep on doing consultancies for, um, for big brands that still do G-spot sex toys. 
and we're so mad with this G-spot thing that doesn't exist and uh, people are still talking this thing like this, you know, and um, uh, uh, knowledge is power and uh, we are experiencing this every day more and more. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the bottom line is like, of course, uh, uh, revenues are important, but uh, in this case, uh, the mental health of people, it's uh, more relevant, definitely. So like keep, keep the team entertained, uh, keep them, you know, up uh, and uh, keep all of us, you know, doing a, a great job. Uh, just today, this morning, Eleonora uh, um, had this uh, really beautiful presentation with all the team uh, with uh, an insight of uh, with benchmarks on the um, sex toys, you know, special future. So, and all the team was very, very interested about it. And it's a way for us to, to not just do a kind of formation for everybody, uh -huh. but, also, but also to keep them very, uh, um, very focused. So, uh, but I want to add to answer your question, Lele, as well, in terms of sales. Um, the sales uh, was, uh, I mean, at the beginning, because we have a physical source, a written mortar, which is uh, almost the 80% of, uh, uh, of sales. Uh, 80 is not, uh, it's not a little percentage. So can you imagine the first, in the first place, like thinking about closing the store and just go back online? I mean, just move everything online. It was like, oh my God, can we do this? I mean. At the end, we did it, and we did it. Uh, yes, we, <laughs> we we did it for real. We moved everything uh, online, um, all the sales, and um, of course, the marketing, the digital marketing, was uh, uh, very much powered as it never before. So we we put down like a very tight schedule. About at the beginning was a lot. We, we made a lot of uh, uh, Instagram lives, uh, but then at the end it was just, you know, um, we, we just uh, fix it as, as, as we, we test it. You know, we test maybe some, uh, some kind of marketing tools uh, and then maybe we rework it and again. So basically three months was like, at the beginning was a struggle because uh, I found myself like, thinking about it like 24 hours a day as all the rest of the team like how i mean and, how are we gonna do this and instagram deleted our already shadow banned profile the At first the week of the quarantine <laughs> yeah boo instagram <laughs> exactly yeah so but it was stuck. tough <laughs> <laughs> but in less than 12 hours we got our profile back and the only way to have your profile back, if it happens to one, any of your friends or community, you know, is edging on the Instagram policy of posting, the only way to get your profile back is to signal it through Instagram, uh, through the, um, uh, what is it? The, there is a problem button and ask for the nickname to come back on Instagram. So we were already in shadow band. We, we, went, we came back with a little less shadow band. I did our, we, we had a little. I don't know, a very shady. Yeah, um, that's, that's <laughs> this shady thing. But uh, Frida, there is a question from the audience. Basil is asking, oh, okay. is the, the G spot doesn't exist. And I guess this is a question for you. <laughs> I don't know, Lele, if you want to go through the question and answer later, but uh, this is a hot, this is a oh, hot I think you topic. can totally answer that question. Can we? <laughs> okay, okay. So the G spot is a tricky question because there's not enough studies about it. It's like the square thing uh, questions. Like uh, everybody, uh, we, they are asking us, how can we square it? And uh, is that is that something real? Is like so at least once a day more. I think more than once a day we get a question in, in DM asking like, teach me how to square, uh, which is impossible uh, because of two reasons mainly. 
Uh, one is like there is not enough studies about it. And uh, same as the G-spot. So the G-spot is around an area um, called, uh, it's close to an area called the, the urethra sponge, which is like a sponge that is, that surrounds the urethra. Um, uh, so that area in inside inside the vagina there is no uh, such a thing like a, um, a, an area where is the sensitivity is higher than the rest of the, the vagina so g-spot is still a question mark so it could be connected to what is like kind what is like supposed to be uh, the female prostate that is all connected to the square and blah 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 uh, but um, there is no there I, I don't have a specific answer to the uh, to this another one i give like random random answer the the, the 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 my reply is it doesn't exist because there is no such a uh, scientific evidence that gave us the permission to say it does exist. Mm. It could be connected to the back of the clitoris. So once you do, once you do penetration, you go, you, you are stimulating also the clitoris, which is, you know, very, uh, it's like an iceberg. So you have the glands that it's uh, popping out and you have all the body of the clitoris, which is hidden inside the uh, labials. Uh, when when you do penetration, you are basically uh, stimulating the clitoris as well, and so you don't orgasm from just the stimulation of the glands, but you can orgasm also from the stimulation of the body of the clitoris. So yeah, there is no such a specific area called that it should be called the G spot. This is the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I would love to give you more specific answers sooner uh, because uh, I, I believe that they will, they will study more this, uh, this area of the body. I also did last week with the girls um, um, a meeting, uh, a formation about uh, the clitoris, uh, which also I was studying at my course, but I found those information uh, not enough for me. And that was a, a, a basic course of two years. Of course, it's not ended. We're going to study the clitoris more probably last, uh, the next year. But still, I wasn't happy about all the information I got. So I had to study on books and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and also on, on, uh, on medical uh, resources. And uh, still, there is not enough uh, cover about the, the clitoris. And it's very bad it's 2020 and uh, we are uh, we have to put like uh, another question mark on a female a female part which is just connected to female pleasure i mean to, to pleasure uh, so it's not connected to reproduction just to pleasure so probably there was no um it was a, um an organ that it, it was not very much interesting for some doctors in history so i just would like to add one little thing is that now you know commercial wise people are targeting g spots and talking about this area or this spot because it's becoming popular to talk about the female pleasure but still we are doing it stigmatizing the female pleasure and giving it a name or like it's a spot so it's of course it's hard to find because a spot has no dimension you know it's it's almost impossible to find. But um, if you want to be in the progressive talking about it, you can define, you can define this area calling CUV, Q, Q area, which is clitoral, urethral, vaginal area. So Q, Q area is the non, how can I say, the discriminatory way to speak about the inside, area of pleasure of the vagina but it's still something that as Frida said we don't have enough medical information to, to talk about it yeah g-spot is so simplistic and uh, the CUV is more like connected to what's the 
as, as Eleonora say, a broad area. Uh, and also, you know, we think about our bodies, uh, I mean, too, too much as a mechanical thing. So like, tell me the secret, the technique uh, to mm. just get on my G spot or, or how to square it. We are, we are all different. Like there is no other way to, to talk about this. And sometimes people ask uh, information in this kind of technical way uh, and they pretend to have answers like, uh, please tell me that it's, this is uh, uh, this thing that is happening to me is right or uh, this mm. is, is it wrong? There is no right or wrong is so personal that you have to find your own way to orgasm or to get pleasure. Um, that is very, uh, there is not a shortcut. People look for a shortcut because mm. they are not uh, enough, patient enough or they, I don't know, they don't want to invest time on their pleasure. And because everything is so fast and quick, they want everything, you know, I want to buy this, I want to buy that, I want to buy an orgasm as well. So <laughs> this is not possible. Take your time to get to your pleasure and you will not regret it. Mm. As we, we always to... say, pleasure is oh. a journey, not a destination. Absolutely, yeah, always, <laughs> always. That's like for to... everybody. I wanted to follow up to all of these because yesterday talking with Ele was, um, um, I was hearing that like you, apparently as in, you, in your shifting to a digital, a more digital uh, platform during this time, you were giving people like time in the day when they could call you to like video chat and like see products, if they wanted to buy products and ask questions. I guess what I want to know is, obviously, first of all, how was that happening? What were the like questions that people were asking most? And what were the products that people were buying, purchasing more during this time versus before? S considering that probably people were uh, spending more time alone, so uh, people that live alone maybe had a little bit more masturbation life rather than... Uh, like actual relationships if we want to not call that relationship and uh, and what like how how do you think that the questions were shifting during this pandemic if they were and also like generally the sex education in Italy is obviously so like one-sided and probably dictated by the church dictated by this heteronormality that exists in our society and how was it for you doing a store that's completely different than all of that what's your fight about maybe there were too many questions but yeah too many questions like I, I i lost it at one point uh but so starting from question number one uh the 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 let's say, like, we call it consult consultancy, like with mm, people yeah. uh, about that products. So, and uh, what shifted was like, for some people that um, they're maybe a little shy to just get in the store, even though it's very welcoming and cozy, you don't feel like you go in a, in a sex shop, like old fashioned sex shop, where you, you know, you don't know if you're gonna get out. Um, that play, uh, the, the story is very, is very much like a, a boutique, but people are still, you know, very, uh, very shy about the, the, their sexuality. And um, this digital uh, Swift was uh, uh, allowed them to just ask because they are hidden by you near know, their account. Uh, they don't use their voice. Uh, they don't, you know, talk about it, so just try it. And um, so that was a very, I mean, one of, a, one of the reason we had big growth in terms of numbers on social media, but also on sales, was these kind of approach that people had that didn't have before. And also uh, something else happened. So people just, you know, they said it for the first time. And once they said it, they asked, uh, they found the information right away because uh, one of the things we did very much, as I said before, is uh, uh, like being very much on social media and 
replying to every answer to the, so to every to every question uh, that people that people uh, did to us. So with a community of uh, uh, 50k, it's like it's a lot of question to to reply, but we 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 didn't give up. Um, so many of those people they are now customers and they want to come in the store so that was uh, something very special that happened so okay now i said it i trust you i want to visit you i don't care and uh, i will i will not be shy and uh, i will just you know go and discover my sexuality for real this is the time and uh, i think that also you know self isolation increase this kind of uh, conversation with uh, your body because you're alone at the first maybe at first time you get uh, depressed or you get sad but at one point uh, you know our way of you know trying to survive through through self-isolation is a pleasure in a way uh, so you start to cook more you start to maybe withdraw you watch movies uh, you have sex with yourself or with your partner so you find pleasure in in the way you know to to just uh just to just find a way out and so there was a lot of product uh for uh, um, self erotism and masturbation both for both uh, all genders, I mean, like there wasn't such a, spe a specific way. Of course, we also sell uh, garments, we sell clothing as well. That was like completely off that part. So the, the, all the sales was basically, I, I would say 95% sex toys. And there is not a specific type of sex toy that it's, uh, that it's sold, like all of them pretty much equally uh, because each of us is like so much different that you have no idea of how many combinations you can do with different products. You can do like internal and external simulation. You can do a uh, um, uh, penis massager with a gel, with a stimulant gel, with a, a delay gel, with another uh, anal product. So it's like there is no uh, uh, very much, uh, I mean, on statistics, it's like very just growing, all growing uh, at the same level. One thing that we just did last week was talking about um, anal sex uh, uh, with uh, male genitals. So uh, prostate orgasm, which is something in Italy is a very taboo. In general, anal sex is a bit taboo. But anal sex connected to male genitals and uh, the genitalia, genitalias. I don't know. How do you say that? Geni, genitalias. I think genitalia. 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 All right. <laughs> genitals. Genitals. Um, it's something that is never talked about. And it's something that everyone should experience. And so we just, you know, pushed a little bit that thing. And uh, one of the things that grows, uh, in, of course, is not uh, uh, one of the most requested product, the prostate massager, but it's something that I saw like growing because uh, people are also experiences with their asses, which is very good. 